Hey guys, in this video, we're going to go over electric field strength. So what is electric field strength? Electric field strength is defined as force per unit charge, force per unit charge. So what that means is, is actually the force per unit positive test charge. Okay. So the unit positive test charge, what that means is, let's say I had two plates, let's say one's got a positive charge, and let's say my other plate has a negative charge, and let's say then we know because they have two different charges, we know there's a potential difference between those two plates. So because there's a potential difference between those two plates, if I was to put a unit positive test charge, so put a unit positive test charge here, what's gonna happen is because the electric field is defined for that force per unit positive test charge, that electric field strength is going to then put a force on this positive test charge. It's going to be repelled from that positive plate and attracted towards that negative plate. So that's going to be the direction then of our electric field lines between the positive and the negative plate. One more thing to notice about the electric field lines between these two plates. Because these two plates are parallel plates, we say that they have a uniform electric field. And we can see that because we have electric field lines here that are parallel to each other and they should have the same distance between them. And the way that we can prove that is because we know again that if I've got a potential difference between these two plates, we know that energy is equal to the potential difference, E equals VQ times by the charge. So the energy between the two plates is the potential difference across the plates times a charge. And we also know that energy can be said as work done is force times by distance. So now if I equate those and say that VQ is equal to force times distance because they both are equal to an energy, which is measured in joules. So what I can say now, if again, if I look at my electric field strength, force per unit charge, and I want to write this as force per unit charge, I can see that V over D is equal to that force per unit charge or to that electric field strength. So we can say electric field strength is the force per unit charge, and it's equal to that potential difference between the plates divided by the distance between them. So let's say the distance between my two plates might be something like two centimeters. And let's say this plate's got a charge of positive 20 and this charge plate's got a charge of negative 10. The potential difference between them then is gonna be there's a difference of 30. The distance between them is two centimeters or two times 10 to the negative two. And that's gonna be equal to the force per unit charge or equal to that electric field strength. So you can see there's lots of different units then we can use for electric field strength. Because electric field strength is force per unit charge, I can divide it as a newton per coulomb because it's also equal to the potential difference between the plates divided by the distance between them, we can also say it's equal to the voltage per meter. So we can use either one of those units to define our electric field strength. If we have a positive test charge then, I know that electric field strength, I think about it, the force per unit positive test charge. So if you put a positive test charge here, it's going to get repelled away from that positive sphere, that maybe it's an isolated positive sphere. So what we can say is we know that the electric field then lines around this positive sphere are always going to point outwards. I call that a radial field. And if we have a negative charge, we know that if I place a positive unit charge here, it's going to be attracted towards that negative charge. So that's what my electric field lines will look like there. It's very similar to those gravitational field lines around a planet. Next thing we need to know then is the Coulomb's law. So Coulomb's law is the force is equal to one over four times pi times epsilon naught charge one, charge two, over the distance between them squared. Epsilon naught is a constant on your formula sheet, and it's 8.85 times 10 to the power of negative 12. And four pi, again, pi is just a constant. So what we do for these charges, we have to be just something careful. If it's something that says it's got a positive charge, so maybe it's this charge, a plus one charge, that's a plus one relative charge. Now a plus one relative charge is actually plus 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And if this was a negative charge, we know that charge is actually negative 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19 coulombs, right? Because they're relative charges. And then R just stands for the distance between them squared. So the distance between them might be something like, I don't know, like two centimeters again. So that's going to be my two centimeters squared or my two times 10 to the power of negative two all squared. So you see that the equation is very similar to that gravitational equation for forces. Again, just make sure we can see that that force is proportional to one over R squared. We can see the further away R increases, the less that force will be, and it follows that inverse square law.